Hi everyone. One of the most important monastic establishments in all of the world um, and really seminal to Orthodox practice and spirituality is that that was established by St. Sabas in the 500s. Now St. Sabas Monastery is located in the Kidron Valley between Bethlehem and the Dead Sea. And over the years, especially in the years between its establishment and around 650 and then again another 150 years later, these Sabaite fathers were people who underwent tremendous persecution as well as establishing themselves as complete supermen in regards to spirituality in the Orthodox faith. Now, on March 20th, we commemorate these holy Sabbat fathers. And we can't really pin them down to any one particular time. There are a number of accounts that, that come to us uh, from various time periods. And we'll talk about two of those today because they seem to be uh, the most prominent, one put forth by a man named St. Antiochus and another St. Stephen, who gives us two different accounts of certain persecutions that these fathers suffered. So in the year 610, when there were many, many monks at St. Savas, and uh, they had attracted people from all over the world of varying backgrounds, but they were all united in one spirit in dedication to acquiring Christ-likeness. However, at the time, and as would happen uh, an awful lot during that period that I mentioned earlier, there were Saracens and Persians and Ishmaelites who all had their eyes on different things around Jerusalem. Jerusalem, of course, was very well protected at the time. And so many of these uh, hostile groups would instead attack the monastic establishments that surrounded them because they were easier pickings, if you will, than going into Jerusalem. Now, in fact, the Persians were to invade Jerusalem in 610 and just a few weeks after this March 20th date. But they were put back a little bit by the fortifications that they saw Instead, they sought their eye, set their eyes on St. Sabas Monastery. And they went in and they tried their best to intimidate the monks, threatening them with all kinds of things. But the monks remained firm. In fact, these people were saying to them, well, we, we really don't have anything, you see, because the invaders thought that they were going into places that were rich in gold and all sorts of things that would make them wealthy. At least that appears to have been the rumor that was circulating among many of these marauding invaders. But the monk said, we've given up everything for the sake of Christ. We abandoned everything that we ever had and came here and embraced nothing for his love. So we don't have anything to give you. Well, they didn't believe any of that, of course. And so they went from cell to cell, uh, causing all kinds of problems and killing most of the monks that were there, or at least wounding them very badly so that some of them died later on. The monks endured, however, and yet even after these marauders had left, six days later on a Saturday when the monks were at vigil, they came back. And again, they accused them of hiding riches and all these sorts of things, and the monks said, absolutely not. We've got nothing. You've been here, you've seen it before. And so they began slaughtering them yet again. This was a horrific occurrence, uh, as it would be at any time, but no, most noted at this time because these particular fathers, these Savite fathers that were there, were wonderfully pious, many of them over 100 years of age, some of the younger ones tried to flee and got away. The older ones, of course, could not, but even the ones that fled were tracked down and killed. This was to be the pattern for many years until finally when we get 
into the 8th century, the late 8th century, around the year 796, when again the same sort of thing happened. And again, the same reputation for riches and gold seemed to flood the area. Well, the marauders came in again, and they did the same thing. And they decapitated many of the monks, threatening the others with the same if they did not take them to find out where they kept all their valuables. So these marauders went to one cell after another, setting fire to each one of them, trapping some of the monks down in an underground area where St. Savas himself used to exit his cell, trapped the monks in there, set fires on both ends, hoping to suffocate them. And those that did not die of suffocation were brought out and beaten later. There were many other kind of torments that were inflicted solely out of a certain sadistic element in the marauders, which one can hardly uh, believe when you think about it, and also because they wanted something that they could not get. For they saw, because the devil certainly being behind all this, they saw that these monks were not going to give an inch in anything. In fact, they tried to interrogate them individually, but the monks wouldn't have it. They remained silent because they were all together in this. They were of one mind and one heart, and most importantly, one Christian body in working with the Lord and trying to achieve their salvation. After all of this was ended, of course, the monastery continued on, uh, continues on to this very day, even though there's only a small amount of Uh, monastics that are presently there with cells that were originally um, constructed to hold 1,500 monks, which at the time of both the 610 incident and the 796 incident would have been filled to capacity. Because as you see, even after the horrors of the 610 AD incident, the monastery was still filled because the spirit that St. Savas had injected into it spread far and wide. And many, many people were attracted to this for the sake of Christ. The Brotherhood always said that we have come here out of love for Christ and given up everything. Why should we flee out of the fear of men? In our day and age, we perhaps are not as brutally assaulted by such things, although certainly in many parts of the world, Orthodox Christians definitely are. But there are many other assaults also that are put upon us, and it's incumbent upon us to resist them as fiercely and fervently and out of a tremendous love for Christ as as these wonderful Sabbite monasters did so many years ago. May God reward them, and may He reward us as we solicit their prayers for our salvation. Bye-bye.